Great. Hi, everybody. I'm Belinda from Mum Central, and I'm in the yellow tonight. We've got uh, Michelle Chevalier Hedge, who's uh, our guru of nutrition, and uh, Mum of three. So she's going to share with us a lot about diet behaviour. My kids are four and six, two boys, loud boys. So yeah, it's <laughs> challenging, and they're just like everyone else's, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Uh, mine are just not four and six anymore. Mine are 17, 18, and 21. And uh, they're loud and noisy and crazy and hungry <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Sounds like mine still. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. So um, do you want to wait a few more minutes or do you want to get started? We are recording this, so we can always play the, send the player black link to everyone i'll just um see about audio i thought i actually muted everybody's audio clearly i didn't <laughs> i'm hearing somebody little talking in the background i know i've um, Why are you watching? <laughs> Let's have a look finally. Okay. General. Is everyone calling from a computer or is anyone on the phone? I'm on, a I'm phone. on my phone. All on your phones? Okay. All right. Um, okay. A few people have uh, got mute on, so maybe they've muted it themselves. Perhaps if you could just press the mute button, just so we don't get any feedback, then it's nice and quiet for Michelle. Um, and that should hopefully, because they're going to take over the screen otherwise. See how it's black because somebody is picking up the noise from one person. So um, S uh, skip Middleton, if you can just mute your phone, please, or your computer, or press the mute on your um, audio option because I think that's who it's picking up. It's talking. Beautiful. All right. So thanks everyone for joining us tonight. I'm Belinda from Mum Central and um, I, I guess I see and hear it all the time about how challenged we are to kind of work out what we're going to feed our kids, how to, you know, work out what's healthy. We try and do the best that we can for them and, you know, quite frankly, it's just really hard to provide nutritional food and know what's in our food and know what it does to our children's behaviour. As I said a little bit earlier, I've got two boys. They're four and six. They're rowdy. They're loud. My four-year-old loves sugar. He's addicted to it, quite frankly, and it's, I'm pulling my hair out um, trying to kind of weave this whole maze of what do you feed your kids. So um, I've been working with Michelle for a little while now about diet and uh, nutrition and so forth. We've put a lot of articles out on Mum Central and we decided that we will band together and really start to educate our readers about how to work out what's best to be feeding their kids. And really it was an eye opener for me about what sugar does to your kid's behavior. I mean, I know it sounds a bit stupid, but really what the signs are of sugar addiction and how to beat it and how to really curb that behavior. So I'm all for it. I can't wait. Um, and Michelle's just in conversation taught me so much about, just the nasties that are out there in our diets and just ways that we can make really subtle changes that are going to make massive changes to their behaviour, to their moods and um, obviously to their health and well-being as well. So I'll hand it over to you, Michelle. Oh, thanks, Belinda. And hello, everybody. I, um, I, I, I am so in empathy, Belinda, with you and your viewers. And um, I guess because I was that mom, right? So before I became a nutritionist, uh, I worked in a different field. I was in IT and I had three little kids and I had no idea. I'd always had an interest in health and nutrition, but 
um, hadn't done the certifications or my degree. And so I was, I am you. I, you know, I'm, I'm busy. I have three children. I have a dumb dog. I've got, thank goodness you can't see my laundry right now because it's piled high. Uh, there's lots of dishes in the sink. And I'm just like you, a normal mom, three busy kids, um, and a normal life. And I became a nutritionist and we run a busy clinical practice. I'm, I'm, I'm an author of a book called Beating Sugar Addictions for Dummies. I am commissioned by the World Health Organization sometimes to speak on Channel 7. Um, so I really became, um, a, a, of course, entrenched in this space of health and wellness, but in particular around moms and kids because I get this space. It's really difficult. It's not easy working through the maze of, of nutritional myths that are out there. So I developed a program called Low Sugar Kids, and Belinda and I have been working on this, and we're really excited because this is our first rollout, and um, really want to just tonight go through a couple of the aspects of it, do a little bit of education, and then open the floor up to you because many of you have questions and need help. Um, so the thing is about the program that I designed, when I designed this program, it was specifically it's got to be easy, it's got to be accessible, and it can't be expensive, and it has to be tasty. Because if all those three things are included for a mom and a family, then they're done and they're repeatable. But if it's extreme, it's out the window. So, okay, so what's happening? So I'm going to um, flick on to some of the this PowerPoint. Um, and for those of you that aren't in front of a computer, um, uh, you can, I'll just explain what's, what I've put on the screen. I've put on the screen a, a photo of a really angry um, looking monster with donut eyes and lollies teeth and lollipops hanging out and jelly snakes and, and um, gummy bears and things like that that are surrounding it. But really what this picture is depicting, this monster is angry, this monster is sweaty, this monster is miserable. And to me, it's just a fun slide to depict what happens to not only our children, but even to us when we're consuming foods that have a lot of hidden sugars. And we have a lot of um, hidden sugars in things that we even think that are healthy. So just to interrupt, you want to just pop that up on the screen now? So oh, like, so are you not seeing that, Belinda? Sorry. No. Okay. That's all right. Let me just escape back. Oh, yes. So... Just have to hit the share screen button. Can you see that, Belinda? No. No. Okay. Sorry. Going share screen. Bear with us, everybody, for technology. <laughs> Okay. There we go. And if you're just on the phone, you'll be able to download this, as Belinda said, at another time. Um, you know, after this, we'll, Belinda's going to have it up on YouTube. So there you go. There's my sugar monster, right? Everything that I just said, sweaty, angry, miserable. And again, this is everything that happens to our children. Let's just, let's just go through a little bit, a few other things that happen to our children. I'm going to walk you through something that's key um, in the second slide. But let's just talk about this. I like to talk about hidden sugars and some of the stuff that's happening um, in terms of twigs versus logs. When we're eating twigs, things that are full of hidden sugars, things that are a lot highly processed, I call them twigs because they're fast burners. They're not supplying any energy to a kid's brain. They're not supplying any... Ooh, they're not supplying any energy to um, kids at all in terms of brain or muscle or longevity in their day or anything like that. So what's happening to these kids is they're becoming hangry. So who's heard that term before, hangry? Right? <laughs> Hungry and angry at the same time. Moody, brain fog, low vitality, low energy. We are constantly, I speak in a school a week. I'm traveling tomorrow to Melbourne to speak at a school. We see kids constantly who go into brain fog, think that they have ADHD, think that they can't concentrate properly, right? And then what ends up happening to them is not only do does their parents or teachers start saying, hey, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? 
they start to feel self-esteem bombs themselves. So this is a whole vicious cycle that's happening to kids in terms of you know, what is going on with all these hidden sugars. So I always say it's not just physically what's going on with children, but really what's going on mentally. And then what happens to their emotional resilience because they end up deflating because they're being constantly told, hey, what's wrong with you? You're driving me crazy. And this isn't to make anybody feel bad because I do not live in an ivory tower. I was that person. I was that mom feeding my children lots and lots of hidden sugars. But let's just talk about one of the key components, something that I really want everybody to be aware of. Right? We talk a lot about trying to eat whole real food, but when we can't eat whole real food, and we have to buy things out of packages, bags, and boxes, I want you to know one key bit of information, and that key bit of information is on this slide right here, but if you don't have this slide, just stay with me. Okay, when you're looking at an information panel on the back of something, so for right now, what we're looking at is Ski um, Delight Honey Buzz, right? So it sounds healthy. You want it to be healthy. We want to put these yogurts in these yogurt patches, pouches inside school lunch boxes. Right? We want all of this, but let's get real to the real truths of what's happening. First of all, first step I want you to do every time you look, look at a label is read the ingredients. I always say if you can pronounce it, if your mother can pronounce it, if your grandmother could pronounce it, then we're winning, right? Because it sounds like something that is not from a factory or from a, from a chemical processing. If it sounds like it's from a chemical or chemical processing, then it probably is. So first of all, read the label. If sugar or honey or uh, glucose or high fructose syrup appear in the first five ingredients, it should send up a little yellow flag to you to go, oh, gee, maybe there's a fair amount of sugar in this. But one, read the ingredient. Number two, have a look at the serving size of something that you're giving yourself or your children, right? So in this instance, on the Honey Buzz yogurt, look at the serving size. Right now, we're looking at servings per package, two. The serving sizes, they're talking about one tub of yogurt. So if you can see me, I'm holding up that tub of yogurt, right? Okay. Then all I want you to do is three simple steps. Third step, go to sugar grams, look at the number, and divide by four. Right? When you divide in this instance 30 grams of sugar divided by four is seven. Now this is where I normally take my sugar container, which is sitting over there on the floor, and I hold it up and I said, would you take seven teaspoons of this sugar, this white sugar, and would you put it in here, would you fill it up with water, and would you drink it? Those of you who can't see me, I'm holding up a Cocoa Pops um, school canteen approved marketing on the back. Would you take six teaspoons of sugar, put it in this little tiny box container, and ask your children to drink it? Would you take this oak milk, which we think is healthy, right? It, this one's a strawberry oak milk, but let's say it was a honey milk, let's say it was a malt milk, right? And you look at it and you look at the serving size, there's more than 24 teaspoons of sugar in this. Now, is my concept taking the sugar grams and dividing by four a perfect science? It's not perfect, but it is close enough. Why I say it's not perfect is because there'll be some natural milk sugar in your yogurt. There'll be some natural milk sugars in this, but it is close enough. Right? And in our program, and the more you watch our webinars, I'll take everybody a little bit deeper every time. I like to start with just some, wow, this is mind-blowing statistics that we're looking at or, or mind-blowing information. And then every time I'll take the education a little bit deeper, okay? So read the ingredients, 
check out the serving size. Now, manufacturers are very, very good at giving a tiny, tiny serving size when it's really loaded with sugar. For example, if I was looking at Wheat Bix Honey Crunch right now, which Wheat Bix, right? We want it to be good. We want Honey Crunch to be good. But if we look at the serving size, it's a serving size that would feed a bird, right? You show that to most kids and they go, I need five of those bowls. So just be aware, but you know, buyer beware. Look at the serving size. Read the ingredient, serving size, look at the sugar, divide by four. Not a perfect science, but close enough. Um, for those of you who um, can see me, I'm now holding up a boost smoothie and so i speak a lot at schools i also speak a lot at corporate so i like to do things real time with people so recently i was doing a corporate presentation someone in the audience was having boost juice we like to think of smoothies as something wholesome and good so i said let's pull up the website real time and let's do my little exercise that i ask everyone to do read the ingredient read the ingredients look at the serving size look at sugar in this situation, there was no ingredients on the boost. That was scary, number one. Number two, the serving size was 100 mils. Very, very small for a 650 mil container. Long story short, there's 22 teaspoons in this boost juice, right? 22 teaspoons of added sugar. So I'll say to parents, and I'll say to kids, after you have this, or after you have this, you know, apricot bites, milk, uh, flavored milks, flavored yogurts. There's a buzz. There's a buzz. There's a wired, wired kid, wired, wired brains, snappy, moody, going, right? All these places. And then all of a sudden, 75 to 90 minutes later, there's a dip. The blood sugar dips off. And this is where you get really moody, really cranky really sometimes incredibly hungry kids because their blood sugar has swung up really high and then swung down. So just put up a screen of that so you can see their blood, how their blood sugar is swinging. Right? So just looking at the blood sugar swing. Belinda, can you see that screen? Yep. Yeah, great. Okay. So children's blood sugars are swinging all the time. So I'll get parents that will say to me, my child is on such a mood swing. And after I start to explain, let's look at how to read a label and get an understanding of what is in your child's food. And I'll say, do you think they're on a mood swing or do you think that they're just on a sugar swing? So that's, that is the fundamental foundation of what I want everybody to know. I work a lot with Jamie Oliver, and I work with Damon, who produ produced that sugar film. I'm their ex-sugar nutrition. I am their expert on their sugar panels all the time. And I disagree with them about one thing. I really love working with them both. But I do not believe that we need a sugar tax in Australia, because what I believe is if everybody just understood, if they picked up a processed food and they could see how much sugar was in a product, that would give them a general awareness. Because the reality is, we're never gonna not have sugar, right? We're gonna have some sugar. We're just, we're not looking for perfection as moms and dads. We're just looking to lower our sugar content and be aware, be nutritionally armed. Where I always say to people now, you're armed and dangerous with so the one rule of thumb, divide by four. Okay, so some of the things that I want, some of the other things that I want to talk to you about is um, I just want to show you a couple more things on the, on the screen, just buyer beware, right? So here we have something, I'm holding up a muesli bar, an almond, an apricot, go natural. Um, just beware of these things, again, that we think are perceived as being really healthy. So this little apricot bites, if I look at the sugar label on this, first of all, I read the ingredient and I start to get really scared because I would eat three packs of these a day and I would give my kids three packs of these a day, right? So the first ingredient is apricot, second ingredient is sugar, third ingredient is glucose syrup. Boing, that should be raise the yellow flag, right? So then what do I say? Go to serving size. Well, this is a very small serving. So the servings per pack, it's just one pack that we're talking about. But the sugar is 18 grams. The rule of thumb, 
sugar, look at it, divide by four. So I have four teaspoons, a little bit more than four teaspoons of sugar in this pack. Now here's the deal. The World Health Organization, not Michelle Chevalley Hedge, not the best nutritionist in the world, but the World Health Organization says for top mental health, for top hormone function, for top brain clarity, for top autoimmune conditions, for everything good in the body, the maximum amount of sugar we should be having per day is six teaspoons of added sugar. Yet most of our children are probably having about 40. And you can see how easy that can happen when something like this has 24 teaspoons, when something like a boost juice or a smoothie that we get out has 22 teaspoons. So easy to see while we have a land of kids who are going crazy. It's not their fault. There's just a lot of hidden, and it's not your fault. Absolutely not your fault. We're just filled with a world and good marketing of what appears to be healthy isn't so healthy. Okay, um, so a couple of things that I want you to start thinking about, and we make we we deliver lots and lots of recipes in our programs, and we'll continue to um, do lots of recipes, free recipes, but also. There's tons in our program. But just some simple, silly, little ideas. Okay, these types of crackers, right? Or just rice crackers in general, topped with things like nut butters, right? So I love Mavers, but it doesn't have to be Mavers. It could be any kind of almond spread, seed spread, chia seed spread. This is just a great snack, right, for kids. There's even one of these that um, tastes like uh, Nutella right? But it doesn't have any sugar in it. Or maybe it has one teaspoon for like, um, for a pretty big serving. So, so these are the kinds of things that we recommend because whilst I want people to make our simple recipes, I also understand that people are busy. So we're going to grab and go things. But if you look at these rice crackers, there's zero sugar. If you look at a lot of these nut spreads, peanut butter, almond, hazelnut, cacao spreads, cacao hazelnut spreads, the ones that I'm recommending, zero sugar or one teaspoon of sugar. Um, other things, people, people are always laughing at me because they say, Michelle, you're the only nutritionist that really encourages us to eat. And I say, let's bring back the love of food. Let's get rid of this fear of food. We can eat if we just get rid of a lot of the hidden sugars, but we can eat things like this, like corn chips. Make, turn these into nachos for your children, right? So what's the ingredients on these? You, you'll be at, some manufacturers are getting really smart these days, right? So it just says corn chips with natural beetroot so the color looks good, but there's plain ones as well. It says um, no preservatives, gluten-free, but I read the ingredient. It says corn, beetroot, water, oil, salt. Is this perfect food? No. But is it pretty darn good? Yes. Will your kids like it? Yes. Is it great with guacamole, salsa, smothered in cheese, maybe a few um, black beans on the top? Fantastic, right? So this is, I wanted to give you a taste of the type of nutritionist that I am. Our programs, our thought processes are all about not taking an extreme approach. It's about understanding really, really busy people and just starting to slowly educate you so that we can become healthier and our children can become happier. But it's not about extreme. Linda, I might pipe in and let you ask some questions. Um, I thought it might be a good timing to see if any of our um, viewers had any particular questions that they wanted to raise while Michelle's talking about the sugar cravings, sugar addiction, um, the come down, uh, anything like that, just before we sort of moved on any further. If you um, have. I, yeah, uh, I've got a question if you don't mind. Hi, Kim. Hello. <laughs> um, hi, Michelle. Hi, Hello. Linda. Hello, everybody. Um, Michelle, I just wanted to get your opinion. Um, are you aware of the government health star rating that they've been putting on foods lately? And what's your opinion? Because I am pretty ropeable about it. There was a juice that I picked up as an apple juice that was apparently five stars. People are meant to think, oh, wow, five stars. That's really healthy. But it was 94% reconstituated apple juice, which is basically 
sugar syrup with yeah. water to taste like apples. So yeah. how would you suggest people can navigate around the really poor labeling of these products? Oh, I know, I know, Kim. And, uh, you know, you can hear my New York accent, but I always say when, when someone ha brings up a topic like this, I always say it will really make the New Yorker come at me now We're talking about this. <laughs> Right, because these things make me crazy. And at some point when I, uh, maybe, you know, in the not too distant future, I'm definitely going to be moving into food policy. I have a daughter that works at Parliament House and, and this, is our, this is our thing, right? Um, those types of ratings, um, there's not that much that we can do to, uh, to change those. We can create movements. We can have people like me um, talking on the SBS about um, these hidden sugars. So recently, um, Kimberly, I don't know if you can see this, but um, I was doing an interview on the SBS about sugar, and, um, and I held this up, and I said, this is just absolutely sinful marketing. On the back of this, this says school canteen approved. You know, things like that really should be absolutely pulled off and we should have a, a, a governing body regulating these things. What I would say is this, there's a change coming. There's a huge change coming. And so in that we have to have faith. Uh, but absolutely right. A consumer like you being aware of, of those types of things and you being ropeable is great. Sharing that message, me sharing the messages that I'm about to share with all of Mom Central and with Belinda, um, you know, having such a beautiful platform, I'm able to share this message. I get so excited about this. If you could, if you could see, I even get goosebump chills on my arms still because I've been doing this for a very long time. 10 years in this nutritional space. When I was asked to write the book, Beating Sugar Addictions for Dummies, 18 months ago, commissioned by Wiley Publishing out of New York, I, I said to them, why didn't you ask Sarah Wilson or David Gillespie, who wrote Sweet Poison? And they said, Michelle, they, we did. But they said, you're the only one that's qualified that, because you've been talking about sugar and researching sugar way before sugar was sexy and the, and the damaging effects. So what I would say to that, Kimberly, is... Um, you know, we could we could get crazy about all these kind of crazy things and, and the Heart Foundation ticks. I mean, can you believe the Heart Foundation now has me up and talking as a holistic, whole practice, a nutritionist, um, pitched against some of their dietitians that created some of these heart ticks. But this is what I'm saying. The change is coming. There's a movement forward to be looking at whole, real foods and whole, real foods that don't have hidden added sugars in them. Thank you so much. Sure. Is there anybody else that's got a question at this point? Let me scan. Nobody's taking off their mute. No. no. So um, I, I guess maybe if we could talk about um, sugar highs in children yeah. and, and the signs of uh, sugar addiction. Because yeah. it's real, it's very real, and oh. half the parents, I guess, don't realise that their children are on these come downs and how to deal with them, and ha and what what's some really clever steps we can take to help reduce the sugar that they're taking, but still give them a sweet fix. Yeah, great, great questions, Belinda. Okay, let's just start with what we're seeing with children, and um, and and I'm not talking about a small percentage of children. I'm talking about. 90% of our children are all in the same boat, right? So um, parents are busy. There's a lot of grab and go, and, and this is what's happening. So the sugar addiction does become very, very real. In fact, Belinda, I think what we'll do next time is um, we'll, we'll share some of the biochemical uh, information that happens with the dopamine and serotonin and the really profound addiction that happens to sugar. So so what we, what we will start to see is is, you know, kids waking up in the morning and straight away wanting to have a sugary type of cereal, right? They're, they're used to those things. Um, That's my so, Yeah. So the, the, the thing is, what, one of the things that we always say is that people that start their day with sugar often end their day with sugar right? It's that, it's that perpetual swing, right? Because what happens is they start going, and I, Belinda, I, I think that you can see I've got the, um, the sugar, um, 
blood sugar curve going up and down here, right? This is happening to people all day long. So right here where I have my mouse, let's pretend that's seven o'clock in the morning. They wake up, they have a bowl of cereal. They maybe even have something that we would have thought might have been healthy. Maybe some, you know, flavored milk or a vitamin water or some juice. Now, I'll talk about natural sugars versus added sugars later, but most of the day, these poor kids are starting their day off here with 12 teaspoons of, of hidden sugars. So their blood, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 8, 15, 8, 30, 9 o'clock, here they are sitting in the classroom, and the teacher's going, oh, this poor little Johnny, I think this poor little Johnny has some really severe concentration issues. You know what, may, I better keep an eye on Johnny because maybe he has ADHD, right? So here's, so this is what the teacher's thinking. So here's Johnny, it's 9.30, he's in total brain fog. He's exhausted. He's sitting there lying on his desk and he, his brain is just not functioning because all the sugar has blown up his brain and then he's dropped off the cliff. So what happens to people here in this dip is several different things. So they become hangry. They can become hungry and angry at the same time. Everybody's a bio-individual, right? So different kids have different reactions. So some are hungry. Some are angry. Some are so incredibly tired. Some have cannot possibly even think. So as a parent, we might be sitting there saying to them, and I want you to do this, and could you pick up your pants, and could you go get your, your runners from out the front door because you have sport after school. And the poor kid is sitting there, and he's just looking at you, and he is in total, his head is spaced out. It's like one big ball of fluff. And as a parent, we get so incredibly frustrated with this, right? And we're thinking, what is wrong with our children? But the reality is there's nothing really wrong. They've just consumed too much sugar and their brain cannot possibly function. Their muscles can't function either because all, the, uh, all that sugar is boom in the system, boom out of the system, right? So we're talking about blood sugar dysregulation, insulin dysregulation. So what happens here at this point is usually you're reaching for the next snack. So if we haven't prepared a good quality snack for that child or for ourselves, we often are grabbing something that's a quick grab and go, right? So something like this, we think it's a muesli bar that's really healthy. But when we read the sugar label, we go, are you kidding me? There's eight teaspoons in the go natural muesli bar. And you think, oh my goodness, how did this happen? So we couple this sometimes with Something like this, right? Again, we oh, we want this, this up and go. It's got to be healthy. So now remember, we've come off of maybe 12 to 14 teaspoons of breakfast. Here we are at morning tea, another 12 to 14. It's easy to see how this is happening every day of our children's lives. And it's not just our kids. It's us as well, right? So, okay, how do we stop this from happening? One is we find a friendly nutritionist who gets it and can help with good recipes. That's number one. You found me. <laughs> number two, okay, start getting really smart about how, what we're going to feed these kids. The first thing we, we can do as parents is just make sure that they have a good quality breakfast. So I was, I'm speaking at the heads of schools retreat for all of Australia in, in a couple of months. And the key line that I'm going to say, the opening line that I'm going to say is, if parents just did one thing and fed their children a proper breakfast, as educators, we could, uh, we could really harness their brain power, right? So breakfast. Think about things like it doesn't have to be complicated. Our, our recipes are really yummy and stuff like that, but it can be easy. Eggs. Poach them, scramble them, hard boil them. I don't care how you cook them, make a frittata. Um, take your vegetables, perhaps maybe that you've had from the night before, if your kids like roast sweet potatoes, right? Maybe add a bit of those into them. If they don't like that, maybe that's too extreme, have a good quality piece of bread with that, right? But egg is an excellent source of protein, has no sugar, great sustaining energy, right? So I just say, get your kids off to a good start in the morning. A smoothie that takes three minutes to make with some milk, some frozen fruit, 
throw in some chia seeds, maybe a half an avocado. Trust me, they'll never taste the avocado. It'll make the, the smoothie um, really rich and creamy. Why do we like avocado? Avocado was full of fats, and our brains are 60 to 70% fat. Anybody with ADHD, concentration issues, what we want to do is really increase their protein and increase their fats, right? So um, now, okay, so kids will say to me all the time, Michelle, I love that, I love that, I can do that, but could I put a teaspoon of honey in? Or could I put a teaspoon of maple syrup in? And I, I go, you know what? You can, because I know that you're not going to put 24 teaspoons of sugar in, right? That, that is in your other smoothies that you would get when you're out. Um, you know, kids ask me all the time about oats. So a lot of times I'll go through different cereals, which you'll all do tonight when you're looking through your pantry, right? You're going to lift up some things and go, oh my goodness, I can't believe I thought this was healthy. Even some of your muses. Well, let's say as we come into winter, right, we make some oats. So I say, Go ahead and drizzle a little bit of maple syrup on your children's oats. Pack it up with some coconut or some cacao nibs or even even a tiny teaspoon of uh, tiny little um, dark chocolate nibs or something like that. If we add one teaspoon of hidden sugar onto a huge bowl of oats, right, we are serving our children so much more by getting them to eat something that's relatively healthy with a tiny, tiny bit of sugar because it won't be like the instant oats that have 10 teaspoons of sugar per pack. So do you get where I'm coming from? I'm taking, I know a lot of my nutritionists are going to go, oh, Michelle, she's allowing people to have sugar. Well, I am because for many of you, this is your first step into this world. If you start and go no sugar or go sugar extreme or you go any, anything extreme, your family's going to run. My family would run. Your husband's going to freak out. So, so we take it slow and gentle. There'll be other programs with people and I will do, but this is our entry level step into let's start down this path of good eating, right? Um, so, so Belinda said, what else, what are the other tips that we can do to avoid getting our children to go from going from gorgeous to grumpy in minutes? Make sure they eat. Make sure they eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? So because when you're doing that, you're keeping their blood sugar on a, on, a, on a, rather than swinging up and down. I also suggest that those children should have morning tea and afternoon tea. Why? Because if you're giving them a bit of um, a good quality snack in between, things like rice crackers with some, um, with some nut butters on them, um, seeds, nuts, bliss balls. We make lots of bliss balls, lots of muffins, lots of muesli bars and things like that. If you're giving them that and you're keeping their blood sugar up in the middle, what happens is they tend to stay on this beautiful line um, of, of flattened blood sugar, right? So when their blood sugar stays like that, their energy levels will stay flattened. If the blood sugar dips, that's when you find a child that will go seek sugar in a second. So keep them fed. will keep them from going and wanting to you know, charge down a vending machine and hoping something sugary falls out. <laughs> Belinda, can you see my um, slide also with my twigs versus logs? Yep. Yeah, great. So, you know, on, under my logs, I talk about fruit smoothies that we make at home. I love the use of rice and quinoa and buckwheat. Um, I'm not opposed to pastas or any of those types of things. I just have the better ones up there right now. Um, yogurts and yogurt pouches. Um, Belinda and I, well, I, I wrote a great story for Belinda's blog. Maybe it will go up this week about oh, no. crazy, crazy yogurt pouches. I mean, and, and these crazy yogurts are so full of sugar. So um, I have written to many of them. Oh, they all, think I'm a, they all think I'm a crazy New Yorker. I've written to Ski. I've written to Boost Juice. And I said, come on. I want to support you. Us nutritionists want to be with you. You don't have to go no sugar. Lower the sugar content in these things and make it easier for us moms to be able to pack them into school lunches. Um, so you'll see up here I have plain yogurt with fruits and nuts and coconut. You know, flavor them up. 
Again, if you've got a bowl of yogurt in front of your child, in front of your child, drizzle a little bit of honey on it if they need it. Drizzle a little bit of maple syrup on it. Put some inviting things on the top and make it look like a yogurt sundae. Okay, any other? So is, that, there? is that Greek yogurt or plain yogurt? Which yeah. yogurt do you think is the best well, plain, one? Plain yogurt will be fine, Belinda, but I always will take people to the, the best choice. And the best choice would be Greek yogurt because Greek yogurt has the highest protein content. Do not flip out when you're reading the sugar grams on plain Greek yogurt because there'll be some sugar grams. So let's just say hypothetically, I don't have one in front of me, but if you had that container in front of you right now, you might see the serving size might be 30 grams. And then when you go to sugar, it might say four. But that four divided by four is one. That one teaspoon is equating to the natural lactose sugars that are in yogurt, right? So remember when I said it's not a perfect science, right? So we'll get more and more as we go down more education with, with, the, with all of Mom Central, how to recognize what is added and what is natural. But the Greek protein, the Greek yogurt will have some of its own natural sugars, and we don't worry about natural sugars. I'm about, okay let your kids eat fruit because fruit is good food and that's a natural sugar. Any other? Okay. Questions? Great. Excellent. Um, and so, yeah, just talking about the low GI foods and how that's going to help them in their lunch boxes, particularly I'm thinking, you know, most people here will have kids who have to pack lunch boxes daily and it can yeah. be a real thorn in your side to try and pick oh. what you need to actually put in there without feeling like you're just grabbing bunches of processed food because it's easier yeah. or your kids want it more and that's what they'll eat because uh, that's what my kids do. And um, I'm not afraid to admit it. You know, at the end of the day, you know, kids are kids and we just need to have a little bit of control over what we put in them, but it's knowing what to do so yeah. that we have the information we need to be able to make the decision yeah. and help for that success. Absolutely. And Belinda, for, for most people, I want everybody to think about starting any of these programs with us really slow and gentle approach. One, never say the word healthy around your family or tell them that you're making a change because I think you need to add in so much good that people forget about what's been being taken off the shelves, right? So, but here's the thing about lunch boxes. We talk a lot about cooking once and eating twice. So I'm busy just like you guys, right? So quite often what I will do four nights a week is cook enough for my evening meal that I can turn that into something the next day for my kids for sandwiches. So for example, tonight we had just had Greek lemon chicken breasts, right? But I knew that I made enough of them so that tomorrow when I cut open a bread roll, right? Or I have a good quality piece of bread. I can slice that chicken. I can pop, pop it on a sandwich and I can put a little bit of avocado on it. So I'm always looking at getting um, the biggest bang for the buck. How, how can I be one cost efficient and efficient with my time? So I talk a lot about cooking once and eating twice. So whatever was for the evening meal the night before. I recommend parents to get on these wide mouth thermoses and to try to now, you know, again, you have to go slowly with some of this stuff. If you've made a fried rice from the night before, kids like that, right? So maybe try that in your little wide mouth thermos. Um, there is nothing wrong with a healthy sandwich, but here's the components of a healthy sandwich. Really important. It can't just be a slice of bread with just a tiny bit in the middle. I want to talk about putting protein in that. Why? Protein is going to balance their blood sugar, keep them from having sugar cravings. So what am I talking about? Some tuna, some chicken, some cheese. So that's your protein. I also want some fat on that sandwich. How do you get that? Butter, avocado, right? So really, really important for those kids. What is, what's happening is when we are adding protein and fats into their foods, it's turning on a neurotransmitter called leptin. And leptin signals to the brain and goes, oh, you feel 
satiated. I feel good. I don't feel like I need to go and eat a half a bag of jelly snakes, right? When you start to shift these kind of macronutrients, this fat and this protein into these kids' lunch, all of a sudden it starts to turn off their sugar cravings. So don't dismiss the healthy sandwich. I think that that's really important. Don't dismiss trying to get whatever you made last night turned into something for them the next day. What are other healthy things that can go in a lunchbox? I love things like bliss balls, right? So in our house, once a week, we fire up the blender. We've got five ingredients, almonds, dates, um, or any kind of nuts. A lot of our kids are nut-free schools, right? So I say if you can't use nuts, then just use seeds. They taste the same. So you've got um, your seeds or your nuts. You've got your dates for your um, binder and your sweetener. Maybe some coconut. Maybe some cacao powder. Uh, maybe even some tiny um, dark chocolate chips in it, right? put it all in the blender. We roll up 20 bliss balls and we use, keep it in a Tupperware container. And I use that all week long in the kids' school lunch boxes, right? I roll them in coconut. I might roll them in, in uh, dark chocolate powder. So I make many, many versions of them. Um, one of the recipes, Belinda, I think that we have up is uh, the lemony snicker ball, right? So it's a version of the bliss ball, but it's a lemon bliss ball. It tastes sweet because they're sweet with natural dates. Not too many, but enough so that the kids go, mmm, this is good, right? That, that's the important thing. We talk a lot about sugar tolerance, T taking our recipes with enough added sweeteners that we just get to the point where the kids go, hmm, this tastes good. I know that my mom is probably trying to make, make me eat something healthy here, but this tastes good, right? So keeping that fine balance. I wanna let you ask some questions. I can, we can talk forever, Belinda. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? Um, okay, so is, does anybody in, in the um, audience have any questions for Michelle? Just Hi, unmute yeah. yourself. Hi, Christy. Hi. I'm just wondering, Michelle, um, I noticed that you've got gluten grains sitting there as a low glycemic food. I'm just wondering how gluten relates to glycemic control and why are non-gluten grains listed as preferable to gluten-containing grains for a low glycemic diet? Yeah, that's a great question. It wasn't, um, it wasn't necessarily, um, um, I was just, I just have non-glutinous grains up there because I love those and they're probably, like if I was to choose grains of optimal health, those would be the ones that I would pick for optimal health. But grains, it, it are fine unless people are having a problem with grain. So I wouldn't um, just, I should, I need to take that off there. Um, this, these was grains are just good food. The ones that I always prefer most that would be brown rice, quinoa and buckwheat. But I never ever like to discriminate really against any foods unless somebody has an intolerance to that food. So yeah. So sorry about that. I just have my favorite ones up there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, so at some point, Belinda and I will probably write a program where we do a program where it is for uh, people that have gluten intolerances and dairy intolerances. We're seeing lots and lots of that. You know, I have a very busy uh, clinical practice, a couple of them around Sydney as well, and we see patients all the time, right? And there's a lot of kids suffering from dairy intolerances and gluten intolerances. Um, but for the main purposes of the, the program that we're running for general purposes um, we I include all sorts of grains as well as all sorts of milks um, within our programs though we uh, allow so it's a month-long program that we run that people sign up for we allow for personal nutrition advice so if someone did have a child that had dairy intolerances they can e email us in and ask us for suggestions or gluten intolerance Awesome. Anybody else got a question? Don't be shy. Now's your chance. No? Okay. Back to you. So um, when, yeah, we're sitting at 50 minutes now. Did you want to, any final messages, 
Yes, I, I do like a Of course I do, Belinda. Um, I just wanted to say to everybody out there, this is um, Belinda and I's first time doing a webinar, and we hope to do them on a regular basis. Um, so if you liked it, please tell some friends, because word of mouth is always the best thing. And also, if you have any suggestions and recommendations to us, please, you know, I'm always open to thoughts on how to do things better. And um, what I would recommend to all of you is, why don't you try our low sugar? a kids program it's $79 it starts tomorrow it runs for four weeks and there's a money-back guarantee so you get lots of recipes lots of ideas lots of education and you get my team of nutritionists to be your go-to nutritionist for four weeks so um, again this is the first time we're rolling out low sugar kids with mom central um, I've run programs like this these for many years um, but there's there's no um, there's a money back guarantee, so don't worry, you're not gonna lose any money if, if, it, if you find it's not for you. So come along and join us. Um, comment please on our blogs and our what we write about nutritionally. Tell me what you want more of, tell me what you don't want, um, and reach out to me because um, I always say this, um, all of you are not my interruption, you're my purpose. I love doing what I do, so um, ask me, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled to be working with Belinda and Mom Central. So ask away and um, thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, we're uh, recording this. So we, um, for, I know some people have joined in late and some people had to leave early. And quite a few didn't turn up because uh, we sent them on a wild goose chase getting here. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload it to our YouTube channel. And I will email you all with the link once it's up. Should be in the next day or so. And uh, you can then share it around or watch it at your own leisure if there were pieces that you missed. Um, and, um, yeah, thank you very much. We would all, as Michelle said, we'd love to hear what you'd like us to be presenting on. I really think these are a great way to have quite a intimate, um, chat on topics that are really affecting you or, um, perhaps, you know, you don't have access to these services. And I think Michelle's just so passionate about helping us to understand what we need to know about food and nutrition and just helping us be good parents. We think we're doing the right thing, but we only know what we know and we don't know what we don't know. And often these days, the food companies are just bloody clever more than anything and um, take us on a ride that uh, can end up with quite disastrous results if we don't watch ourselves. So thank you again for joining. We hope you've enjoyed tonight and um, I look forward to seeing you on here again in the near future. See you later. Thanks. Thank you. Everyone. See you later. Thanks, everyone.